This screencast demonstrates how to input data and run a simulation in Aspen Plus software. This video will utilize the flowsheet developed in Chapter 1.2, the Building a Flowsheet screencast. When a simulation is loaded or a new simulation is created, the screen defaults to the Properties tab. Here, relevant simulation information can be entered into the program. To begin, make sure you are on the Components folder in the menu tree on the left and on the Specifications sub-item. Specify that water, methane, ethane, and propane are the process chemicals. Chemicals can be selected by entering their known component ID in the Component ID field. Note that Aspen Plus will not allow you to enter component IDs greater than 8 characters long. In this case, you will have to enter the full component name or alias, and label the component with a custom ID. You can search for a chemical by clicking on the Find box and using part or all of the name as a search criteria. Search options may be further specified by compound class and range of molecular weight or boiling point. You can also include or exclude specific property databases from the search. Now a list of chemicals matching your search criteria will appear. Select the desired chemical and click Add Selected Compounds. After all the process components are entered, go to Methods, Specifications, and select an appropriate property method. Here we will use RKSOV as an example. Watch the related video, Chapter 1.1, on choosing a property method for a more detailed explanation. Next, click on the blue next arrow at the top of the screen. You will be directed to a summary table of interactions. Click the arrow again to prompt a dialog box asking if you want to run the property analysis. Click OK and Aspen will do so. After the results are generated, click the Simulation tab at the bottom left of your screen. Notice that some folders in the menu tree have blue check marks on them, while others have red circles. Blue check marks indicate sufficient information has been inputted for that section. Red circles denote that further information is required. You can click on the arrow next to a folder to expand the menu tree. This allows you to see more specifically the information that needs to be entered. Alternatively, you can click on the blue arrow at the top of the screen to be brought to any menus that have outstanding fields to be filled. Notice the name of the input screen on both the tab at the top of the input box as well as on the menu tree. You can switch back and forth between the main process flow sheet and the input menus by clicking on the relevant tabs. Recall that our process flow sheet consists of a single two-stream heat exchanger. For the inlet coolant stream, let's suppose cooling water enters at 68 degrees Fahrenheit at 14.7 PSIA, with a mass flow rate of 20 pounds per minute. Change the total flow basis to mass and input the flow rate in the appropriate box. In composition, change the left box to mass flow and specify that all 20 pounds per minute is water. Alternatively, you can specify the individual component flow rates of the stream by mass or mole fraction. Specify water as 1. Click the blue next arrow to go to the inlet stream. Let's suppose the stream enters at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and 14.7 PSIA with a mass flow rate of 35 pounds per minute. In composition, select mass frac and specify the stream as 50% methane, 30% ethane, and 20% propane. Now click the blue next arrow to go to the heat exchanger tab. For this screencast, leave the calculation mode as design. Under the Exchanger Specification tab, choose Hot Stream Outlet Temperature from the drop-down menu, and change to 212 degrees Fahrenheit in the value box. Change the approach temperature to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Watch the related video, Chapter 4.1, on the shortcut heat exchanger method to learn more about the simulation block. Pressing the blue next arrow again will open a dialog box confirming the required input is complete and asking if you want to run the simulation. Click OK and you can now view the results. Watch the following video in the YouTube playlist to learn about convergence and presentation of results. For more ASMA tutorials, visit the Cornell CBE YouTube channel.